welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are hopping into the Commodore 64 for Little Computer People, a research project. Okay, what is the day today? Today is the 16th of June, and uh, that's uh, January, February, March, April, May, June, the sixth month. <laughs> Is it bad that I don't know the months? And the year 2016. I bet whoever designed this game did not intend for somebody pl to play this in the year 2016. Uh, I bet the game registers 1916. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, what is the hour? Um, well, we'll say this is 8, 8 in the a.m. Because that's when I uploaded this video. And let's see what impact this has on the game. And here we are. This is Little Computer People. Now, this is a game that is very, very unique. So first of all, I should say, this is a Commodore 64 game. For any of you who followed me last year, you'll know that I did not have a lot of luck getting Commodore 64 games and Amiga games playing. Eventually, I figured out the Amiga problem, and I made it, decided to make it a mission for this year to figure out Commodore 64. And lo and behold, I'm running a Commodore 64 program with little trouble whatsoever. Uh, what compute? What program can we run on the computer? How about a name changer? Go ahead, let's change our name. I'm going to describe this game in a bit more detail in just a second. You may be wondering what the heck is going on, but right now we're just going to change the name of our little character here. Character's name on file is Hune. We don't like that name. We want to be Joey. But you thought I was going to write J. Uh, no, we'll be Joey McLaughlin. Good Irish, no, Scottish name. The McLaughlins. You gotta get that loch if you want to say a, a Scottish name correctly. Yes, that is a good name. Research data updated. Thank you. So, Little Computer People, this is a very interesting game because it's almost not even a game at all. Uh, essentially, this is kind of like the first Tamagotchi. We have a little computer person here, and we can type to him. We can say, um, oh wait, where's he going? Let's just wait and see what he does, first of all. Let's not burden him with commands. But essentially, this is more like an interactive pet than anything else. And what's interesting is that the old instruction manual for this game really emphasized the idea that you weren't controlling these players at all. You essentially were viewing them through this game and that their lives existed whether you were around or not. An interesting sort of factoid about this game is that everybody's version of this game that was sold, all the discs sold, had a different little computer people in them and they all had like I guess slightly different personalities and so on which I thought when I read that that was just an amazing concept I mean I suppose it's true of Tamagotchis I, I never really had a Tamagotchi growing up by the way so I don't really know anything about them but imagine you bought a computer game and there was an AI that you could interact with in the computer game and it was different depending on what version of the game you picked up Right? And it's not like there was like a blue version and a red version and so on. It was just like, no, literally all the boxes were identical. It's just the code was slightly different in every single game. So it would be a slightly different AI in each, which is pretty crazy, actually. Um, so as you can see, my guy is walking around doing stuff. I haven't typed a single thing. Let's see if he'll play the piano for us. I know we can ask him to play the piano, and sometimes he will. What's kind of interesting is that... You know, you might already be thinking, this kind of seems like an early version of The Sims. And in a way, it totally is. Will Wright, the creator of The Sims, has actually come out and explicitly said that this game was a bit of an inspiration for The Sims. But unlike The Sims, you can't force people to do stuff. How about, please play piano. You can request things. And sometimes your little computer person will do things but you can't force them to do anything, which is kind of crazy. So this really is, it's almost like having a goldfish. Ah, there he goes, he is gonna play the piano for us. This is it guys, this is, this is gaming in the 80s. Oh yeah. Don't have to play our own pianos like a sucker, we got a little computer bot to do it for us. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very, very interesting idea for a game. I was kind of thinking, like, these days, would this even count as a game? Because, like, I'm quote-unquote playing it. I don't even have my hands on the keyboard right now. I'm just kind of, like, sitting back with, like, you guys, I presume, are. Just chilling, watching this. And it really does kind of strike me as, like, having a goldfish. And I kind of wonder, like, in a way, 
I could almost see in the future people having sort of virtual fake quote unquote aquariums where something like this is running. So you could have like a little virtual person alive, quote unquote, in this virtual aquarium. Like the same way they have virtual, where's that dog going? Dog wanted to come sit upstairs. The same way they have, you know, um, I totally lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, the, w the way they have digital picture frames. You could have like a digital aquarium where you have little bots or people or animals or something alive in these like virtual environments. It'd actually be really funny if we could feed him. Could we do that? Feed man. Doesn't do anything. How about feed man fish food? If a hand drops down and drops fish pellets that he rapidly... Oh, it didn't get detected. Feed man fish food. There you go. You know you're on an old computer when you can like out type it. Like I did totally type the N there in man, but it totally missed it. I was typing too fast. Can't keep up with uh, my 60 words a minute lightning typing speeds. Okay, one other thing I know you can do here is he will play a few games with you. So let's go ahead and do that. Because otherwise, I think essentially all he's going to do is kind of wander around. He'll go to sleep at some point. He'll watch some TV. We already saw him working on the computer in the fireplace. And as interesting as it is to watch that, um, let's play some poker. Let's gamble with this fool. I guess technically the only thing you really have to do is the player here. Uh, oh, he's okay. He's heading downstairs, taking the long way. Uh, the only thing you really have to do as a player here is make sure this guy has enough food and water so he doesn't die, although I have no idea how to actually do that. It is kind of a lonely existence when you think about it. This poor man just putters around his house with his dog, never takes his dog for a walk, never meets any neighbors or friends, never goes to work, never leaves. I mean, he has a lap or a computer and he does do stuff on it. I guess this is like the future when everyone can work from home. This is what our lives will be like. Um, only with the housing market uh, and the mortgages the way they are today. Good luck getting a house this extravagant. Okay, I guess we have to ante. So let's go ahead and ante up. We got a six, a four. Oh, you know what's funny? I was totally expecting Texas Hold'em, but I guess Texas Hold'em is a relatively modern thing. Came around in the 2000s. Um, do you feel lucky today? This is three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's an open-ended straight draw. Okay. Um, hey, where's he going? <laughs> Where are you going? Get back here. No. You, you have to play poker with me. Um, okay, we'll just pass. Okay, I, I, I'm pressing a key and it's not doing anything. I guess the game's on hold. While well, he, like, washes a dish. Who washes a dish in the middle of the first hand of poker? It's just bad poker etiquette. Now, as a kid, did anyone, did any of you guys think that little characters in your video games actually lived in your computer? There was an old, I'm going to pass, that's fine with me. Uh, we want to draw. I want to draw. Oh, yes. How do I, it's not taking it. Oh, no. What's going on? He had a straight. I couldn't figure out how to... It wouldn't let me take a card. Okay, we're going to try this again. Ace. Ten. Nine. Five. I don't know why I'm calling out every card. Um, That is not a great hand either. I guess we can try and draw for an ace or a queen. Um, I want three. Oh, I see. So we indicate the cards we do not want. And then we hit draw. Well, that makes more sense. Okay, we got a pair of ladies. Dealer takes four. That means he had crap. So we're totally going to bet. We're going to outbet this dude. Enter. I feel unlucky I fold. Yeah, you do. Okay, we're getting the hang of it. Now, as, as I was saying before, uh, <laughs> before I got all flustered there. Oh, God, what a horrible hand. In this, there was an old animated TV show called Reboot, which I don't know if you guys, I should have drawn something there. I don't know if you guys remember or if you ever saw it, but the whole premise of the show was that 
you there were these characters that lived inside uh, I bet I, I totally bluffed and I totally lost what oh I had a pair of fives that beat his pair of fours my god wasn't even paying attention all right I wonder like can we take him for all he's got I really want this guy to lose all his money Ooh. do we throw away the twos I think maybe we draw for an ace Let's go ahead and bet here. Okay, he's matching us. So I'll have to tell my reboot story after because this is too distracting. Let's just focus on the game, right? The the quote unquote game. Do you want any cards? Uh, yes. I want to get rid of. Doesn't really matter. I just need to make a second pair or three of a kind. And I got nothing. He takes three. So he's got a pair, and his pair is going to be my two. Uh, so I definitely don't want to bet. He's just going to win. What? Oh, we both... Oh my god, we both had a pair of twos? Man, this is like World Series of Poker here, but I'm getting incredibly lucky. I don't know if you guys ever played internet poker. Back when poker was at its peak, me and a couple friends played it a little bit online. We played like the penny tables, so you put like $2 into it and you'd play. And I don't know about you guys, but poker online is relatively hard and you have to have a ton of patience. At least that's what I found. And so I kind of quit playing poker when I realized that I, was, I would spend like a whole Sunday afternoon playing and I would win a lot. Like he just won there, good for him. I would win a lot, quote unquote, but like I would win like a dollar for playing like all day. And I realized I was I was working for like 10 cents an hour, which was like nothing. So it's sort of like, why was I playing at a certain point? So I definitely quit poker at one point. Um, we're totally gonna bet that. Pair of nines, pair of nus. Okay, enter. You always gotta up the ante when you've got a bit of an advantage. That's how you win at cards. Do you want any cards? Yes, I do. Uh, we definitely want to get rid of we want to get rid of the jack and the four Now it's kind of arbitrary what card I hold on to here like the ace Because um, I'm trying to pair that up. I could have held on to the jack and dump the ace You hold on to the ace just in case you don't pair anything and he also has a pair of nines your kicker Which means your highest single card would be an ace and you would always win so it's oh Yeah, and see look as I say that I should have held on to the jack like, I don't have a terrible hand. We'll bet it. Um, I don't know. Sure. I'll bet two. The stakes are so high here. He's just going to win all his money back right now. Oh, no, he is not. He does not know how to play poker. Okay, let's play, like, one or two more hands here, and then we'll we'll see what else he has to offer. I'm actually kind of enjoying the poker. Ooh, 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah, we're going to bet that. We're going to bet it all, baby, which means six. Uh, we definitely want to draw. We want to get rid of the queen and the jack. Oh, man, two pair. And he took four. Oh, man, that means he would have to have drawn a pair and then paired up the one card he held on to, which he did not do. So... Let's make this fool fold. Actually, we've, we've definitely overbet. He's totally going to fold. Yeah, he folds. Damn. We should have lured him in. So the whole thing with betting in poker is sometimes when you know you can beat someone, you bet weak to try to lure them in, give them a value bet. So they, could, they have to call it. Um, this is a horrible hand. Let's just pass. This is our last hand, by the way, because I'm getting so drawn into the poker that I'm not commenting on the rest of the game. Uh, do I want any cards? Yes. Uh, whoops. Can hold on to that. There we got the flush, the straight, or pairs that we could draw. See so what we get? Whew. My god, that is a beast of a hand. Okay, we, we totally gotta get make him pay to see the, the my hand. Come on, bet, fold. Uh, okay, one more. We, we gotta We gotta have this fool lose. Like, actually call me and lose. Oh, man, I'm getting, like, decent starts. Okay, let's go ahead and bet. 
he seems to call everything before uh I want to say before the flop, but there's no flop because this is not Texas Hold'em. Uh, now, what should our strategy be? We could try and go for the flush, which is like a long shot. It's probably safer to go with the ace-queen, I think. And we made a pair of aces. Dealer takes four. That means he has a terrible hand, as always. Uh, okay, let's bet a couple. Come on. Call. Ah, okay. Well, we're done humiliating him. We've taken 20 of his dollars. Let's go ahead and quit. Resume your daily life activities, my friend, Joey McLaughlin. There you go. Take your poker box away. Run home crying upstairs. I want all your money. Your rent money is mine. If you had children, they would not have food. <laughs> This is like a bizarre game to try to comment over because they're. I, I really feel like I'm just watching the video with you guys. I'm so used to commenting while I play a game that I'm not actually really playing much here, and it kind of feels like um, just doing some commentary on a video of pre-recorded. Um, okay, let, let's do one more game with them. Let's see what card war is. Anagrams is just anagrams. I'm not great with anagrams. Why did he have to go all the way upstairs to get the game and then run all the way back downstairs. Is this like a ruse? Is like Commodore 64 using this time as like load time to load in Card War? That would be really smart of the developers to have done actually, but I, I think it's there's no reason why the game box couldn't just be in the living room right next to the kitchen table where he seems intent on playing. Okay. Uh, show me your card ace. Okay. And now I win. Are you serious? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> this isn't a game? This is just, he shows me one card, I show him one card, whoever's the higher card wins. This is just total random. I guess this is war, actually, now that I think about it. That's what war was as a kid. The, the, like, easiest game to play ever. There was absolutely no strategy, no choice, completely deterministic. If you're going to win, you're going to win. Okay, well, this is an easy, easy game to comment over. Although, like, again... <laughs> Ace, I don't believe it! You are amazing at this game. Show me your card, Ace. Ace, I don't believe it! Oh, Ace is the same thing every time. I wonder what happens if we, like, totally wipe him out. He's like really losing. Okay, well, we'll let this go for a little bit. Let me try to wipe him out. Let me talk about Reboot. So Reboot was a show, a Canadian show. Oh, we got a war. Okay, this is the like only exciting part about war. Okay. Oh, look at them all. And I just lost. I lost all those cards. Whatever advantage I kind of had is now gone. And we're back down to a four card lead. Okay, I'm just not even barely going to pay attention to this. So Reboot was a, a show with computer-generated characters. They lived in a computer, and it was actually really cool. So in a way, it was kind of like the TV version of this. And they all had, like, little personalities, and the idea was they were sprites. And the sort of crux of the show is that once in a while, a user would load a game. And when a game would be loaded into the computer... Um, you know, this giant purple cube would fall down from the sky and a, a computerized voice would say, warning, incoming game. And all the sprites would have to rush to l get into the game before it landed. Because then when the game started, it was like the computer sprites versus the, the human. And if the human won, the sector got nullified and everyone died. So it's a really like weird kind of um, take on how computers work. I mean, even as a kid, I knew this wasn't real. I knew there weren't like little people living in my computer and if I if I won a video game um, they would be destroyed. Like imagine this guy's playing war with me right now. Imagine if I were to beat him at war he literally would be killed. That This would be a terrifying prospect for him. He would be sweating bullets through this game. This game which I am actually um, significantly losing at at the moment. Although it's pure randomness so it's like not like I'm doing anything wrong. Ooh, we won. I hope we got his good cards. We got a king and a ten, which are okay, but I had two aces on the line. Glad I did not lose that. Okay, you're tough. It's all chance, my friend. All chance. But Reboot was an amazing show. It had, like, viruses who were villains. It had, like, the Bios was, like, this ancient wise sprite. 
Um, it it was a terrific show actually, and it got really good, um, sort of in later in later seasons. I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but if uh, you never heard a reboot, go check it out. It it actually was a pretty interesting show. It was a kid show, obviously, so it may not hold up one hundred percent these days, uh, but it definitely was a good show. Now back to my question here about is it, would this count as a game? What do you guys think? I'm curious here. What do you think in terms of would this be a game that you would actually play these days? You know, I mean, I'm sure there's Tamagotchi-style things on iPhones and Androids, and I haven't really ever looked at that, but I, I, I guess some people must play those things. They must exist. Oh, my God, this is going to go on forever. Forget this. We're, we're quitting war. We're just going to let this guy... We're going to leave him to his own devices. Okay. There we go. Go, you're free. I'm not going to play more games with you. Just do whatever it is you're going to do. But I don't know. If if I had some kind of like digital picture frame, I would kind of be semi-tempted to put this, put a game like this up. It would be nice if there was an updated version of this so that my guy was a little more sophisticated in what he did. But it's kind of an interesting idea. Definitely, if nothing else, I, I don't know if this is like a, a game that I would play very much, to be totally, to be brutally honest with you guys. But this is definitely a very neat concept. So it gave rise to The Sims. It, uh, oh, is he going to take a shower now? Nope, he's going to use the washroom. Oh, good, we get to watch him <laughs> go to the washroom. Yes, we were keeping him with that game. He really needed to go, but he was too polite to just wander away. I wonder what his dog's name is. Sparky. Maybe Sparky. But yeah, games that aren't games. They're interesting, still, I think. Another question... I'm just going to inundate you guys with a couple questions here, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up, because I feel like, you know, we've kind of got to say, man, he's taking a while to wash his hands there. What the hell is happening? I think he's... He's telling us off. That was so rude of him. Did you guys hear that? The profanity that, that spurted from his mouth there. He was like, you mother effers watching me take a poop. How dare you? I'm going to go watch television, I suppose. Nope. going to go downstairs. He's going to sleep. What is he going to do? Wait. Are there two beds in his house? What's that upstairs bed near the, the green uh, cabinet? Oh, he's walking around. We need like a burglar to break in, like spice things up. Or we need to like be able to tune in after he's like come home from like picking up a girl at the bar and like watch him fail at romance. I just sit there and call someone random. He's like, they're still here. They're watching me. I played poker in war and they won't leave. Call the police. So here's another question for you guys. What do you think of the idea of a video game where each version of the game is slightly different? The way this was, where every uh, character, every version of the game essentially had a, had a slightly different little computer person personality. I think that's a really neat idea. I don't know, though, if it would work in today's modern gaming culture, because I feel like everyone is obsessed with sort of completing every game and, and having every version of things and not having an incomplete experience. Imagine you bought a version of this game and the personality of your guy sucked and your friend had one where the personality was awesome. That would suck and you're stuck with that because you got that version of the the... No, I don't want to do the name changer. Do number two. What is number two? Nothing. He's like, okay, well screw it. I'm just gonna wander over here now. Well, I kind of feel like I, I don't know what else to talk about here. <laughs> totally honest. The, oh, I guess one last thing is, uh, you know, we can we can finally say that Jay got a Commodore 64 game to run. Although, I was tempted to try the Amiga version of this. The Amiga version actually has way prettier graphics. So you guys can look up a screenshot for the Amiga version if you're curious. But it, you know, DOS games ha did this too, where the backgrounds were often just black and dark and it kind of felt a little cold 
but this game you can see clearly has just black backgrounds. The Amiga game is full of bright colors and nicer graphics and more detail and I was kind of tempted to play that instead of the Commodore 64 version and that actually raised one more question for me which was what do you guys think in terms of what version of games I should play? I know I've asked this before but like do you think it's better to play the first original version of every game in which case I definitely should have played the Commodore 64 version which I did for this or do you think it's better practice to find the prettiest, best version of each game? Oh, he is playing a video game. He's playing a video game that looks more exciting than this game right now. <laughs> what a tease! I mean, it let me play poker with him. Let me play that game, dude. Dots. Dots and backgrounds. Man, he's playing a better game than me. What a rip. So yeah, I don't know. What version of games do you think are worth playing? That's my final question. I honestly can't think anything more to say about this game. Um, the pros are that this is highly creative, and I definitely think that this is a really neat product that, uh, you know, to have existed. And this would have been like this would be like a fun thing to have on at parties, just in the background. It's kind of like this is more art than game. In terms of its cons, it obviously is. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry for anyone who, who likes this game, but this is kind of a very boring game. There's <laughs> very little gameplay to speak of. Really, if you want to play a game, if you want to play anything, this is not the game to play. Although it does have poker, and that that's fine. Um, but the cons are not like a derision of the concept of this game. Just the fact that... Now he's back at it. The fact that, yeah, there, there isn't much to speak of here in terms of gameplay. So, yeah, that's my, that's my thoughts. Should you play this game before you die? I would say definitely there's no need to. Um... That's not, again, not because it's a bad game or a bad idea or something like that. It's a very neat idea. And as I said, I'm glad it's here. It's just not something where you're probably going to get much joy out of, I don't think. Um, yeah, so that's my, that's my thoughts. Take, it, take them for what they're worth. Guys, if you've enjoyed watching me hang out with Joey McLaughlin here, go ahead and give me a like, give me a subscribe, because we'll be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game, a more interactive game, I'm sure. Oh, he's having some some uh whatever the hell he's eating i have no idea what that is it's like generic yellow paste looks or, or maybe it's like a cheese cube you have strange dietary habits my friend anyway guys until i see you again take care of yourselves and peace is he gonna do it i don't think he will but it was worth a try. Damn it.